so the conclusions that Andy and I came to in assessing physics theory is that we distinguish the Western Indo-European cosmos, which has isolated non-living systems, versus the general semantic or non-traditional or null cosmos, where planets meet the definition of living. Uh, our environment and organism are separate noun forms, and in the Western Indo-European, separated things. When we free ourselves from our mistaken linguistic assumptions, we find every Earth-style organism has an inseparable unity of organism boundary and environment. We judge assumptions able to predict towards surviving as favorable and away from surviving as ones we don't want to perpetuate. Doings or happenings are dynamic. Uh, and an appropriate descriptive phase, phrase is of a person is organism taken as a whole in its environment at a date. Uh, there's intrinsic self other in close proximity across that organism environment boundary. Uh, theories are transactional, which means that they alter both the environment and the organism making the theory. Uh, and transacting in general always changes the organism as well as the environment. You eat something, it changes what was outside in the environment, and it changes you inside. Uh, you say something, it changes your own representations of yourself, and it changes whoever heard you, which could be yourself if you're talking to yourself. And it's crucial to understand that we can detect in our environment only those doings or happenings that produce inside the boundary of our organism the kinds of changes that stimulate nerve endings. We have no direct contact with environment. We only have inferences about it. And we only have inferences about the changes that have affected our nerve endings. So now I'm going to get into an additional part of the talk. Uh, I'm starting with a couple of quotes from Einstein that the level of thinking we have done thus far creates problems we cannot solve at the level at which we created them. And Einstein did have the concept of spatiotemporal ordering. The experiences of an individual appear to us arranged in a series of events. In this series, single events which we remember appear to be ordered according to the criteria of earlier and later, which cannot be analyzed further. And a quote from Tom Lear, once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, says Werner Baum Brown which is kind of reflective of the attitude of the physicists that how their work affects the environment is unimportant. And how they affect, affect themselves is non-existent. I really got beat up telling the physicist that doing an experiment changes him. So, in Western Indo-European symbol systems. The goals of physics are to understand phenomena in the physical universe. Science from the 17th century to the present holds as a best practice to trust and verify that results should be subject to challenge from repeating experiments. 
theory should satisfy the theorists on aesthetic and intuitive grounds, i.e. it should make sense, and it should explain more things than rival theories. Additional nulle or non-traditional or general semantics goals of physics theory include account for at least two observers, both of whom are organisms in an environment at a date. Performing science is a transacting among humans where you've got the two observers. It could be the same person at different space-time coordinates or it could be two people at different space-time coordinates. Uh, designate as an anomaly each way that products or applications of modern science threaten the survival of the human species or the biosphere. And generate lived theory that promotes human and other species biosphere co-survival. Uh, There are major issues with a lot of the published science. Um, the October 19th to 25th, The Economist published that Amgen was only able to reproduce six of 53 landmark studies in cancer research. Bayer reproduced 17 out of 67 important results. Um, between 2000 and 2010, 80,000 patients participated in clinical trials whose results were retracted because of mistakes and improprieties in the research. And because of how journals decide what to publish, negative results have gone down from in the 90s, they were 30% of the published papers. Now, only 14% of them are the negative results. And those are the most key to identifying future directions forward. You get more information from what didn't work than from what did. Ah. OK, so much for the PowerPoint. Um, So what is going on that this new knowledge that is being generated by You're science, off, you know? I wanted it to. Oh, okay. I have no more PowerPoint slides. Oh, they didn't get written. <laughs> uh, so why is the scientific knowledge bringing about human and species suicide on the planet. Uh, we consider these things to be anomalies that need to be accounted for in future science. And we maintain that these anomalies follow from the assumptions by which even today's relativists and quantum theorists reinterpret taking the observer into account by divorcing their studies from actual observers, thereby eliminating the observer from consideration. Uh, when you, when you do that, you're eliminating, uh, anything living from your theory, as well as eliminating the environment and anything which can sustain life. So they're positing a mechanical universe and they're helping to create a dead universe. Um, two key kinds of experiments on that. Um, the Michelson-Morley experiment showed relativistic discrepancies where fast-moving electrons have greater mass than electrons at rest. Uh, 
that cast doubt on the Newtonian physical theories, and there were only three approaches the physicists could take. They could ignore and blot out those results. They could admit they exist, but either not pay attention to them or dismiss them and just go on about business as usual. Or they could take them seriously and find a means to account for them. So the development of Einstein's relativity theory came from taking them seriously and finding a means to account for them. Uh, However, even Einstein, while he considers spatiotemporal ordering, he assumes that the observers that are at different places in his experiment are identical. He assumes that there is no time delay in their obtaining measurements. Um, these assumptions are Ignoring the fact that there's actually at least six intervals at human speeds involved in doing an experiment with two observers. The first one, first observer takes time to do his measuring. Secondly, takes time to tr process the measurements into findings. Thirdly, takes time to transmit the findings to a second observer. Fourthly, the second observer takes time to digest and process the findings. Fifthly, the second observer compares them with his own, his or her own findings. And sixthly, takes time to discover a relativistic discrepancy. So, by not taking these time intervals and the propagation time along the nerves into account, Einstein is uh, treating these activities as non-ordered in time and is thereby eliminating the observer as we would consider an observer an organism at, in an environment at a date from consideration. So this turns out to be no more satisfactory a non-ordered assumption with respect to propagation of nerve impulses than the assumptions Galileo and Newton had made with respect to the propagation of light. Uh, what we want is a physics that systematically takes into account representations of the physical system, how the observer experimenter physically manipulates the experimental equipment he or she sets up and uses, the results re obtained, how he or she transacts with that social system, which includes his or her own nonverbal and verbal training, and his or her teachers, peers, and students, the protocol for designing and performing an experiment, which he or she learned from that social system and uses in the present experiment, the theoretical structures he or she invokes. And a prediction, if we humans do not affect a major revision in our lived theories and so dethrone the social institution of power struggle, then the human species will kill itself. So which will we humans choose? To cling with the lived theories of the past and ascend to species suicide or risk revising the lived theories and live to see what happens? Thank you. Thank you.